we're going to talk tonight, I'm going to talk about defensible space, um, but very specifically, I'm going to talk about some of the myths that surround defensible space. We're talking myth busting tonight, defensible space. The, the feeling among a lot of people that I need to remove all of the vegetation around my house to create defensible space. Uh, nothing could be farther from the truth. We need to think carefully about the vegetation around our homes. We need to focus on things like maintenance. We need to focus on, on careful plant selection and, and uh, the landscaping itself. Defensible space is all about the types of vegetation. I think of a wood shingled house, that, that vegetation absolutely needs to go. So the choice in vegetation is one small aspect of creating defensible space. Defensible space is not just about the plants. It's about the design. It's about the way you maintain that landscape. It's about the features that you build into your landscape, the permanent features, not just the plants. This is probably the big one, the mother of all myths. My neighbor's tree is an extreme fire hazard. I have an inbox full of messages that say just that. Pe people write to us, they call us, they're concerned about their neighbor's tree, oftentimes concerned about their own trees. We want people to look down, not necessarily up when they're thinking about their defensible space. If the fire department just forced everyone to create defensible space, we'd all be safe. It's not the case. The fire department does have some ability to enforce the defensible space codes. There are laws related to defensible space and the maintenance of your landscape, but I want people to understand that the law does not prescribe a perfect defensible space around homes. The defensible space is not harmful to the environment, although there is a myth floating around that, that creating defensible space creates harm to animals, plants, insects, and the landscape. Myth. Defensible space means cutting down trees. This is not the case. Again, we're not talking about the trees when we talk about defensible space, at least not the canopies of them. We want you to look towards the ground. We want you to look at, look at the space around those trees. We want you to maintain a healthy natural forest around your property. I only need to worry about defensible space on red flag days or I only need to worry about wildfires on red flag days. And this is absolutely not the case. You need to worry about your defensible space, your home safety and your family safety at all times during the fire season, which is, is uh, in many cases essentially year round now. In California, the, uh, there are a variety of, of laws and codes and ordinances that address defensible space. And they address the defensible space around your home uh, it, it, in using this theory of zones. Zone zero, zero to five feet, is going to be addressed by a new law, a change to California Public Resources Code that'll come into effect starting this year and be phased in over the next three years. And that's going to address a, a number of items that we know now are, are extremely important to the survival of your home, the combustibles within five feet of your walls. Zone one, five feet to 30 feet is a space where the, the CAL FIRE and the state law addresses it directly as the lean, clean, and green zone. This is an area where we want to see no dead vegetation at all. Grasses must, must be cut to three inches or less. Trees need to be limbed up six feet from the ground or a third the height of the tree. And we want to see spacing put between shrubs and plants. From 30 to 100 feet, the law requires that you provide Basic maintenance, not removal of trees, removal of dead vegetation only. You don't necessarily under the law need to cut your dry grasses from 30 to 100 feet, although we strongly recommend that. It's July 2019 and after a couple of years of very devastating fires uh, Hi, in California. Hi, I'm Bonnie Morse. I'm a beekeeper and a certified arborist. Today we're gonna to be discussing how to make your landscape both more resistant to wildfires while also protecting our pollinators. Increasing fire dangers are not the only crisis we are facing with the changing climate. We are facing unprecedented threats to biodiversity. In the long run, loss of pollinators could create a shift in vegetation with plant reproduction favored by wind pollination. Wind pollinated species include grasses and pine trees, which tend to be more fire prone. Long before European honeybees were introduced in the colonies in 1622, 4,000 species of native bees, in addition to butterflies and other insects, pollinated flowers in what is now the U.S. The majority of these bees, 
90 of which call the San Francisco Bay Area home, are solitary and ground nesting. Commercial farming practices, which provide much of the food consumed by the population, have had detrimental impacts to pollinators over the past 80 years. In the urban environment, loss of habitat, pesticide use, and prioritizing plant aesthetics over function has also impacted populations. But urban areas are also in a position to transform quicker than areas dominated by commercial agricultural production and could potentially hold the key to protecting biodiversity. Landscapes that are more fire resistant don't have to be biological dead zones. We can have both fire resistant and ecologically beneficial yards. We're being asked to remove plants that tend to have higher fire risk. Well-maintained and irrigated plants are almost always safer than ones that are drought stressed or poorly maintained. That said, some species are more difficult to properly maintain due to characteristics like high leaf litter and dead woody interiors as they age. Many of these plants do not support biodiversity and are non-natives, so removing them and replacing with better selections can be a win-win. Transforming your garden into a fire-smart and biodiverse landscape may seem like a daunting task, so make a plan to tackle it in steps to maximize your maintenance dollars and minimize your time investment. Fire safety can be both beautiful and support biodiversity. We can have it all with careful planning.